to another episode of How to Pass the Math FSA. Math is like totally my favorite thing in the world. So I love it and I just have to share that with you. Okay, is that cool? All right. Um, so today we're working on math.5.nf.2.7. Today's episode is lesson 16, dividing fractions. And by the way, I totally goofed the last video and I called it lesson 12. Uh, no, it was lesson 15, so that was cool. Um, but I'm sure you knew that. Sometimes my brain is just in a million other places, so. Uh, but let me stop just chattering and let's just get to it, okay? So let me teach ya. Example one. It says Cameron runs in a six-mile race. He stops for water at every half mile marker, including at the end of the race. How many times does Cameron stop for water? Now some kids might just jump into adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing these numbers, but let's make sense of it, okay? Stop to make sense of it, that's what you gotta do. So me, I just need to make sure, I think I know, I think I know that it's division. One, because we're dividing fractions and that's what the lesson is. But on the FSA, you're not going to know if you're dividing or not, unless you've been practicing and you understand what the question's asking you to do. <clears throat> so, let me draw it out for you, okay? So, he's running in a race. Here's little Cameron, okay? See? And this is the start of the race, and we know the race is six miles long. Do boop. Okay, so there's six miles and that is the end of the race all right so he's going and he's running in a six mile race but he stops at every half of a mile so if this is zero and that's six then let me plug in my miles and let me just jump in front of here real quick just to make sure i'm kind of even boop boop does that have to be perfect no three so that'd be one mile two miles three miles four miles five miles, but he doesn't stop at every mile marker. He stops at every half of a mile marker. So he stops right here. Okay, we put a little star. He stops there and then he runs another half and he stops there. And then he runs another half and he stops there. And then he runs another half and he stops there. Then here, and then here, and then here, and then here, and then here, to do, to do, half. And also at the end. So how many stops did he make? He made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve stops for water. That would be my answer. Okay. All right. So I knew just because I've been practicing a lot that this was calling for division of fractions. Now, if you knew that right away, you could have said, okay, I know it's going to be six divided by one half. And I know that when I'm dividing fractions that I need to keep, change, and flip. That means I keep my first number. That would be 6. I'm actually going to turn that into 6 over 1 because it's the same thing. We change the sign to multiplication and we flip the fraction. So 2 over 1 flip. 6 times 2 equals 12. 1 times 1 equals 1, which equals 12. Same answer. All right, example 2. Riley has 5 cups of cheese to make pizzas. Each pizza needs one half cup of cheese. Part A says create sections on the number line to model how Riley can distribute the cheese evenly. And part B says select the total number of pizzas that Riley can make. So I have two parts to this question. Um, the first part where it says create sections, since yours is a computer-based test, I'm not exactly sure what it would look like when you click on it. So. Um, I don't know if like a line would pop up to separate the sections. I don't know if it would be like a dot. Um, today I'm just going to do dots to show you. Um, but anyway, you would interact with this because it's a graphic response item display. And I'm just not sure what would appear when you go to click on the sections. Okay, so just kind of use our imagination today. So um, for every, she has five cups. So five cups of cheese is where I need to go to and each pizza needs one-fourth of a cup. Well, between each hole is already broken up into one, two, three, four equal parts. So at each one-fourth 
part, I need to make, um, in this case, a dot. That's what I said I was going to do. So, right there would be a fourth cup. Two, three, I'm going to go all the way to five. It's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay, so I just went to five cups of cheese, and at each one fourth, that was a new pizza, a new cup of cheese for the pizza. So the number of pizzas that Riley can make would be D. 20 pizzas. Right. Mrs. Graham has three birds to feed. This is example three. She only has one-sixth of a bag of bird food, and she distributes the food evenly to each bird. Distributes is a nice way of saying divides, especially when it's evenly like that. Which equation shows how to calculate the fraction of the bag each bird would get? Okay, let me make sense of this. So she has three birds to feed. These are my birds, okay? Three birds to feed, but she only has one sixth of a bag of food. <clears throat> All right, so this is the amount of food that she has, and she needs to take what she has and divide it to each bird, okay? So, what I'm going to do is if she has one-sixth of a bag, she's dividing that to three of her birds. Okay, so let's keep change flip because I'm dividing fractions. So I'm going to keep the one-sixth. I'm going to change the division sign to multiplication, and I'm going to flip my fraction. So the original fraction would have been three over one because three over one is the same thing as three. Now I'm going to flip it equals 1 18th. Now the problem is there's nothing up here that looks like what I've done. Okay? So what needs to happen, so basically we need to keep in mind that 1 6th divided by 3 equals 1 18th. Okay? And if I were to go backwards to check that, to calculate it, it would be 1 18th times 3 equals 1 6. So again, nothing up here looked like what I have up here. For instance, I have 1 6 times 1 3rd equals 1 18th. There's nothing like that here. I've got 1 6 divided by 3. There's nothing like that up here. There's no division. In fact, it's all multiplication. <clears throat> so you have to do the reverse. I took my original statement of 1 6 divided by 3. I plugged in the quotient there, and now I'm going to go backwards, which would be 1 18th times 3 equals 1 6th. 1 18th times 3 equals 1 6th. And just to make sure that works, <clears throat> 1 18th times 3, so that would be 3 over 18. And when you reduce that, you get 1 6. So that answer is right here, C. All right, so I know the last one was a little bit confusing. Um, I would definitely suggest going back to rewatch what I was doing until it clicks. Um, ask your teacher, ask your parents for more clarification with that. I also have included in the complete guide um, with the link below a few more problems that are just like that to get you some more practice there. So don't stress it. Let's move on. Example four. Select all the expressions that have a value of 1 24th. All right, so I'm going to divide all of these out and see if I get 1 24th. So division of fractions, I got to keep, change, flip. So I'm going to keep, change, and flip it to 1 4th. That would give me 1 24th. Yes. Keep, <coughs> excuse me, change. Flip would be 2 over 1. That would give me 2 twelfths, which would reduce to 1 sixth. Nope. 8 divided by 3 would go keep, change. Flip would give me 24. Nope. 
Um, six divided by one fourth, keep, change, flip would give me 24. Nope, keep, change, flip. One times one is one, eight times three is 24, so one twenty-fourth. The first and the last would be your answer. All right, we're on example five. Example five says, create a real world scenario to illustrate the expression eight divided by four. So here's what I'm gonna do. Emily reads for eight hours at every one fourth hour she plays with her dog Ricky. How many times does Emily stop reading? I'm going to write reading to play with her dog. Okay, so that would be a real world scenario. This is an open response item. It is also a shout out to my buddy Emily and her dog Ricky. Shout out to you guys. So that's it. Emily reads for eight hours at every half, sorry, every fourth of an hour. She plays with her dog Ricky. So how many times does she stop to play with her dog Ricky? I'm not gonna tell you. Instead, write the answer in the comments below. Okay, let's see who can get it right. Bye. All right, people, before you go, you know that I have a motivational message for you to be thinking about. In addition to all that fun mathematics that we've done today with dividing fractions. Okay, so think about something that you want in life. A dream, a goal that you have. I have a dream. What is that dream? Dream it. Visualize it, see it in your brain, see it happening. That's step one. Then start planning it out. Now don't get stuck in this stage, that's what I do a lot. I get stuck in this planning stage and then I get overwhelmed. Just plan for a little bit, visualize it, plan some of your steps that you're gonna do, and then act, act on those steps. And then you gotta repeat because you're gonna keep on dreaming up new dreams for yourself. Dream, plan, act, repeat. That is what you want. So comment below. What are some things that you, some dreams that you have? Maybe you want to be a singer, a football player, a doctor. Okay? I know that you're only in fifth grade, but there are things that you can be doing right now. You could be like my friend Adrian. He, I know he wants to be an engineer. So this boy has a dream, has a plan, is already acting on YouTube all the time trying to learn his stuff. To become the smartest kid that he possibly can and know what he wants so that's awesome shout out to you adrian and that's it so i'll catch you guys in the next episode where we will be working on something super fun okay bye